जी वी एल नरसिम्हा राव एज द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ द रूलिंग डिस्पेंसेशन द रूलिंग पार्टी दी ओनस फॉर रनिंग द हाउस इज ऑलवेज ऑन द गवर्नमेंट एंड द ऑपोजिशन इज बेसिकली सेंग दैट इफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वुड डिसाइड टू मेक स्टेटमेंट ऑन मणिपुर टू मोरो then the house will be allowed to function right after that instead what we've had is four wasted days of parliament no <clears throat> zaka opposition uh, for, uh, the parliament functions according to its rules parliament functions according to conventions it does not uh, conform to blackmail by the opposition and uh, uh, and in, in on any subject um, the the minister concerned replies to any debate on uh, on subject matter of that particular ministry here you have you have a a, a very capable and a very senior minister in shri amit shah who has actually visited the manipur and he knows the latest situation on manipur and can answer to any questions on manipur to the opposition and he is for the last four days the government has been saying that we are ready for a discussion as soon as the session convened on 20th morning at almost 11 10 in the morning i can tell you in rajya sabha and so in lok sabha the chairman in rajya sabha said the government has accepted piyush goel ji stood up and said we are ready for a discussion on manipur so what is the opposition what is all this ruckus about okay the home minister shri amit shah said, said yesterday we are ready for a debate in fact he said we can have any length of a debate and today he has even written to the leaders of the opposition both in rajya sabha and lok sabha so what is the oppos- is the is the is the opposition only interested in dere- derailing parliament okay Or, so let me ask uh, arvind sarn that you know before before i get to whether opposition just wants to derail parliament and why don't you start the debate uh, you know and the home minister has said in as many words he's willing to stand there and face all the opposition's questions but arvind sarn the question that's also being asked is you know today the prime minister referring to the india alliance said that you know east india company also had india in its name indian mujahideen also have india in in its name doesn't mean that any of these organizations speak for the people of india so just because having india in your name doesn't mean you become representatives of the people of india or the voice of the people of india how do you respond to that how does the opposition india alliance respond to this attack i think it is really really this the honorable prime minister statement is disheartening disappointing derogatory and hence it is deplorable absolutely deplorable i think the honorable prime minister when he visits around the world in so many countries when he goes to that country he is recognized and accepted accoladed by the people of those countries as the prime minister of india does he have any reservation about that name india why should come here like this you are using a freedom of speech you are at liberty to criticize but the way you are criticizing your parties people or ancestors have never ever uh, participate in the independence fight or agitation what you you call it never ever still you say like this it's really really deplorable disheartening too and unbecoming of a prime minister of india making such statements is the really idea becoming of a prime minister of india anyway then uh, they always uh, play the politics of division mm-hmm. they love to play the divisive politics and by division only they do not want party the india to be united our india is united is inclusive of everything and that is what we should understand and therefore uh, the present situation manipur when we have moved a motion that is known as adjournment motion you one must understand the precedents of of the functioning of the parliament and the tradition of the parliament by accepting adjournment motion you don't get defeated what is wrong in it you show you the government expresses well yes we to have a serious concern about it we have accepted your adjournment motion okay. nothing wrong in that you have a huge number you have a huge number what could have happened what could have happened you tell me the discussion would have started on the very day 100 people 550 people died 
No. We, uh, no, 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 the question, the question is also in, that you, you is just it, acknowledge. Is it, is it acceptable to the honorable Mr. Prime Mr. Savan, you just acknowledge and I want to ask this to both Jyoti Mani and to Sushmita Dev. Sushmita Dev, you know, the opposition apparently is now contemplating and it's likely that they could bring in a no-confidence motion tomorrow against this government. Now, please explain to our viewers, what is the rationale behind bringing a no-confidence motion against a government which has 330 MPs in the Lok Sabha? It is one of the biggest majorities seen in uh, contemporary political history of India. What is the point of bringing this no confidence unless and until it is to embarrass the government and to force the Prime Minister to speak? I mean, does that go to prove that the opposition is more interested in uh, getting the Prime Minister to speak rather than actually have a debate on money? It's very simple. The debate that should happen in the parliament must must have the prime minister participate is extremely crucial and let me explain why we have never said that the home minister of india can't take part in this debate but when the home minister of india called a all party meeting we all went for it home minister of india went to manipur and spent three or four days said i've spoken to all factions i've spoken to the government but we have seen that nothing has come out of it. What is the problem or what is the possible justification that where a state is going through a constitutional crisis for more than 80 days, a prime minister should shy away from a debate or participating in a debate? And the no confidence motion, if it happens, I don't know if that, take, that, that has been closed. It's very simple. A no confidence motion against the government is to tell them that there is a part in the country, there is a state in the country where the people of that state do not have confidence in this government. The own, their own BJP MLAs have spoken out against the BJP government in Manipur and the BJP government in the center. They are speaking on every channel. Even on your channel they have spoken, other channels they have spoken. There is a huge trust deficit there and I think we need not it's not, a, it's not always about a number game or no confidence motion. Okay. No confidence motion may be won, it may be lost. But there is something to be said here about the fact that the people of Manipur have lost confidence. Mizoram is now in getting into turmoil. As you have seen, thousands of people have gathered. What is unraveling in the northeast needs serious attention in the parliament. And short of the fact that Prime Minister is refusing to join the debate, Refusing to join the debate, it is our democratic right to invoke every instrument that parliamentary democracy okay. allows. So, let me ask uh, Jyoti Mani this. I want to come back to, you know, the attack by the Prime Minister. It is part political, part semantic, if you will. But he has turned around and, and tried to turn the tables on the India alliance, saying that just because you call yourself India doesn't mean you cannot be politically attacked. I mean, the comparison to the East India Company, the Indian Mujahideen, Popular Front of India, basically saying that just because you have India in your name doesn't mean you have the best interests of the country uh, in your mind. 